Hey everybody, I just wanted to go through and kind of walk through the Ancestry.com app on my iPhone just to give everyone an idea of what you're able to access through the app. And lots of people do have memberships on Ancestry.com, but for those that don't, we kind of give you an idea of the of of what you'll be able to see, what you'll be able to use on the app. Um, so let me just go ahead and get started. All right, this is my main family tree, as you can see in it in the upper right hand corner. It has like the little home icon. You click on that, it's going to put it right, focus right, you know, where you start. So there I am, Joshua D. Freelu, and then it branches off everywhere from there. And you could change the view. You know, you can look like this. You can zoom out. You can go back. You zoom out this way. Okay. Um... There is a search option too, where you can search through names that's in your family tree. Um, as you can see in the bottom left, hints. Okay, as you as you go through and start making your tree, Ancestry.com it, it it has the, a feature to where it'll give you hints. To information that it thinks belongs on your tree. So if you, you know, put in your your great grandfather's name and uh, birth date, then you might st start getting some hints where it it pulls up, uh, you know, m maybe information on on his address, where he lived, or the date of death, or might it might pull something up from a census. So you can see through here, uh, do the latest. These are the latest hints. Um, but not all of them. Just because it says it's a hint, that's all it means. It's a hint. So you got to take a look at it. Verify if it looks like it's correct to the information. Um, let me give you a... Let me go through one of these. Let's see. I mean, it, it could be any of these. Like if you see see somebody's name, Gustav, Robert. Okay. So you'll actually pull up the record and try to verify that it is really for that person. I see Gustav A. Roberts, auto painter. The year looks like it's 1914. Where's the location? Where is this? I don't know if that's something in California. It says residence Modesto, California. So then it would just depend on me. I'd have to go back and look. Is that person in my tree? Do I have them listed as living in California? Probably not. So it's probably not the same person. And in that case, um, at the bottom, you can see where it says no, maybe, and yes. And at the top, it says, does this record match the Gustav Robert in your tree? And then you could click on it, you know, any of those options. If it does or doesn't, you know, put maybe if you want to come back to it. I got a lot of these I just haven't gone through. Um, let's get back to the tree. Uh, just to show y'all some of the, you know, some of the really cool stuff I've actually found, just on you know, I found through Ancestry.com, not through any other kind of research. Um, let's go through my email family. That's my great grandfather Louis J. Email. Go to August, August or Auguste email. Let's click on his profile. So that's. My third great grandfather. Um, 
some of the some of the cool stuff I found with him is Civil War records, prisoner of war records. You see right here. So okay, Auguste August email. Now if you look up here, there's a D email and an A email. I'm pretty sure they were brothers. And it gives you some pretty good information. The rank of private gives you the regiment they were in, the company, where it was captured, Vicksburg. And in July, July 4th, 1863. Now, one of the cool things about this is with this information, I'm able to see, okay, where they were captured at and the date. So then, okay, Vicksburg, 1863. So with that information, I could go ahead and Google it. So I already did just to show you. Now look, the siege of Vicksburg from May 18th through July 14th, 1863. August email was, it says he was captured in Vicksburg and the date given was July 4th, 1863. So now I'm able to say that that's when he was captured as a prisoner of war was during the siege of Vicksburg. So then, you, you know, you're able to look up all of this information about that, you know, that battle. And I mean, as you can see, you look at the casualties and losses. That's a lot. So you're able to look up all that information using the information I was able to find through the Civil War records on Ancestry. Um, this, is a, this is another part of that Civil War records. There you go. There's his name again. Um, Augusta email, private. And this, I think, so this is uh, complexion, eye color, and hair color. Let's see. Just the email, so he was so dark, dark complexion, brown hair, brown eyes. From assumption, he was a farmer. And what does the state mean? I mean, it gives you a ton of information on here. So that's some of the that's some of the pretty cool stuff you're able to find. Like I said, I found that looking just on Ancestry.com. It wasn't through any other kind of research. Um, now this is something. This is uh, this is something I did find on my own at the library. Um, I got it listed as death records. I found this in a in the local library as a. A book of um I probably I think it was birth and death records uh through a Catholic Church. I think this must have been I don't know if this was the one for I guess Homa, Terrebonne, Thibodeau, something like that. But uh let's see. So they have his name in here as a as Augustine email. But I'm able to get his age of death. So that's something else, you know, to help me verify information I have. So let's get back out of that. Go back to home. Zoom out a little bit. All right. So, you know, get, like I said, gave you a quick look at what you could do on there. Um, and then I also had my DNA. I did the DNA test. And that's also linked on here. So I could click on DNA at the bottom. And, okay, it's going to pull up. It's got my name. At the very top, you see Ancestry DNA. If I click on that, see, I got, I have a bunch of other people in my family that I that I had tested to. So I could pull up any one of theirs and look up the information related to their DNA test. But right now, I'm just going to look at mine. Go back. So, all right.
And the reason it's saying retrieving estimate, and it says, you know, your results are up to date, your DNA doesn't change, but and that's because as they get more, more DNA in, more tests, more results, it's able to, you know, fine tune the estimates. So it will change over time, but it gets more accurate the more, you know, over time, more people take the DNA test. So here's mine. Uh, you see, 50% France. Let's see what that means. Yeah. So, oh. Okay, 50% France, 43% England, Wales, and Northwestern Europe, 3% Germanic Europe, 2% Ireland and Scotland, 1% Basque, 1% Italy. And migrations, it has me as Acadians, which, I mean, there's really no surprise there. I know that my, my the Savoy family... I know that, it, you know, they were they were Acadians coming from Nova Scotia, so, you know, none of that's a surprise. Um, but then I can go back. Let's see. Okay, so then scroll under there, and my DNA matches. So I go through there. Like I said, I got my my mom and my dad both uh, got them to take the DNA test too. So they got listed, they're listed on there. But then you could just go by date and as it, you know, as other people take DNA tests and it, you know, it shows if it matches, you know, it goes on here. So as you can see, it's got, I got over a thousand uh, the DNA matches that are fourth cousins or closer, and then it shows you your DNA circles. Seventy nine. I'll show you what that is. Uh, so that's just basically all the people, you know, where you have a common ancestor. Where this one is Joseph George Loop. Um. So that's the DNA circle that, you know, we kind of are all descendants of him. So that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to kind of show y'all. Just to where if you're thinking about uh, getting an Ancestry.com membership or even if you have one of you and you've never you know utilized the app for it this is you know what you can do with it it's it, it's pretty cool you know you're sitting around on your phone looking for something to do and you can sit there and do a little bit of research it's pretty cool all right guys talk to y'all later